G'day, welcome back. My name's Mark. I'm going to rebuild my dining table that I built about two years ago. I'm going to go through the whole routine of cleaning up pallets, squaring up, making slabs, all that good stuff, just so um, if you're new here, you can check it out and see how I do it. Um, this is me just using a metal detector. If you're going to get into the pallet game, get yourself one of these nice and early because hitting a saw blade and wrecking it is really going to ruin your day. Okay, this is my straightening jig. So I'll pretty much straighten every piece of timber and then run it through the table saw, get it nice and parallel. And now I also run every single pallet slat through the thicknesser, get a nice clean face, reveal all the colors, but more importantly, give me, the, give me that really nice gluing surface, um, as you can see I'm doing here. Check out the new roller, giving that a go. I actually prefer this method, the spatula, uh, gets the glue a lot thinner and a little less squeeze out, a little less waste. Oh, better stop. <clears throat> okay, my squaring up process, um, it, that's what it's all about these days, getting things nice and square, because that really does make your life easier when it's actually time to build the furniture. So using the jointer, the thicknesser, uh, getting everything looking Mickey Mouse and nice and square. I think I mentioned that already, but um, that's the goal here. Uh, I'll run through the table saw, cut everything to size then, but I'll also then throw it back through the thicknesser. One, I can get rid of the saw marks, uh, but also I can thickness it down to that final size. And whatever I did to one side, I did to the other edge to make sure that this profile remains a nice square. I'm gonna go with a nice chunky bridle joint on this one. Don't think I've done it this way before, but just to sort of learn a few things, try something new, um, that's pretty much the goal here. I'll clean up the tenons on the table saw like this because it does a nice, neat job. And then we can go ahead and figure out how I'm gonna do the bridle. I've just taken the measurement uh, for this bridle off the tenons. I'm now gonna use this, um, should I clean it up a bit first? It's a bit sketchy. Let's do that. Trying to be professional around here. What I'm going to try and do to make sure these joints are nice and tight is I'm going to clear away the waste in the middle and then head outwards towards my line, leaving that material, um, leaving it thicker basically and sneak up on the line and I'll just keep going back and forth test fitting it. Uh, once I've snuck up on those lines, I can cut all four uh, outer wings of each bridle and then I can come back and clean the middle out. So hopefully they should all be exactly the same. That's the plan. So here we go. Okay, so this is the first leg, clearing away the middle stuff, uh, taking it on and off, a little bit at a time, making my way over towards those lines. And then, well, the theory was there and I actually went just that smidgen too far. So timber is touching timber, it's just not nice and tight. So here's me making a micro adjustment. So, so normally you want to make something smaller, you wind the fence towards the blade, yeah? Keep watching. And this is me realizing that if you're inching towards a line, you need to turn the blade the other way. And also me hitching up my pants because that's what you do when you feel like a dickhead. But anyway, uh, I reset myself up and I got the next few pretty much good to go. I think the next couple were actually a little too tight as the first couple were probably a little bit too loose. Now check out that awesome mallet uh, made by Cuffy, Cuffy's Woodwork. Uh, it's awesome and I've also figured out how he does the nice hammering in sound effects. So listen to that, that sounds pretty cool too. I'm gonna call it two and a half out of four, ain't bad. Uh, this is the one where when I made my micro adjustment, I turned the blade the wrong way. Uh, and therefore, I've got this big void. So I've got to put this shim in here to um, hopefully bring it back to a success, we'll call that. It's gonna be stained. Who's gonna know? Who's gonna know? Check Ho oh, oh. ho! A little bit different to the originals. One more time. I'll just double check these ones. 
just in case it moves. We're getting there. Just be over here. Don't mind me. I'm just checking this one again. Just milled up all the timber I need to make the frame. It's this nice Merbo cleaned up really beautifully. Um, I've got a couple of pieces laminated together. They are going to sit up here on the end of the legs and they are going to basically take the tabletop. It's going to sit on those and that's going to be my uh, method of attaching the tabletop to the legs. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and whip this frame up and then we can bring in the old table and show you why I'm rebuilding it basically. All right, going on. So the two laminated pieces um, that are gonna hold up the tabletop, they need to be hidden behind this side rail. So I'll just use two other pieces as the spaces so I can set back this first cross piece for the framework. Just throwing a couple of biscuits in to help me align this rail that's going to hold up the tabletop. Probably not really necessary, but I like using the router and it's cool. So uh, I thought I'd chuck some in anyway. Okay, assembling the frame. Many things need to be checked many times. Check square, check square, check square, just in case. Um, that one, really want to make sure that's nice and square, as with that one. And pretty much every other time I put a screw in, I throw down the set square and just check, just in case. And one more time, just double check. This is the first corner, so we need to get off to a good start. Okay, just swung it round. I'm doing the other end now. Uh, I haven't screwed this one in, but it's a good sign that it, it is actually square. Happy days. Okay, so that's the frame all knocked up. It's all pocket screws, normal screws, and just all glued together. Um, That'll give this tabletop a little bit of structure. So I've got my two pieces now, or three pieces, the frame front underneath, the two end legs. I will now start to pull this old dining table apart so I can salvage the top, clean it up, and get all this put together. Oh, also, um, this thing is very square. I've checked. Okay, just chucking in a couple of dowel pins. One, because they look cool, and two, it's really going to strengthen up this bridle joint um, just in case the table cops a bit of heat. I know it's going to hold up. Alrighty, you'll be shocked, but these legs, they're not square. Now, it's just off, but it's not even eyeball square. When, you, when I walk into the house every day, I see it. Hence, why well, I'm a little bit paranoid about checking. The reason this all happened is basically because of the frame. Um, back then wasn't very good at squaring things up nicely. These rails actually had a bit of a lean to them and it was, I was committed. So a little bit of lean here um, makes the legs tip over. So uh, from memory, I think I glued this entire frame down as well, as well as screwing it. And as you know, that's stupid. Okay, let's look at this little one. So we're touching here and there's a massive gap on this side. Now that is a result of trying to flatten something with a belt sander and then not checking square. And then just little things like, there's still a heap of little bits of glue squeeze out. Again, this is, this is a whitewash finish, but those things are a little bit dodgy and we can do better. Okay, here's another thing. So with this end here, I basically cut all these pieces to the same size and then glued them up. Um, it's not a nice, clean, flush finish. Some couldn't be sanded as smooth because they're a couple of mil in. Again, it's a little bit dodgy. All right, it wasn't glued down after all, so that was a good thing. There was just a thousand screws, pocket holes holding this framework down. Uh, these pieces just basically knocked apart when I pulled the screws out. So... How good are threaded inserts? So that's what I'm gonna to use to attach the tabletop. It's gonna to pull in two directions, 
but allow the wood to do all its stuff that it needs to do. Use a bit of CA glue from Starbond. Now you can get yourself 15% off with these products if you use my code, which is Dana15. Chamfers. Never gets old. Alrighty, what have we got going on here? Uh, figure eight clips. That's what I'm going to use because, you know, wood movement and stuff. This sharp chisel business, it's a bit of a novelty, so I'm doing things I probably shouldn't. I decided to put a nice large chamfer just on this outside edge. You hardly notice it, um, just because it, once it's stained up, but just gave it a little bit of, I don't know, something, something. I, I dig it, so that's why. This is an oil-based stain and varnish. It's like a walnut stain. Don't exactly know how dark we want to go yet, so we'll just do as many coats as it needs until we've got what we want, but we don't want to lose all that sort of pallet work. So you see the actual strips. Got a wet rag to thin out the white paint, and then I'll just hit it with a paintbrush to make it a little bit more even. Sticker sponsor shout out is Paul from The Wood Knight. He has a massive channel, over 300 videos. Go and check it out. You're gonna learn lots and lots of things. Thanks, mate. So the way I've designed this is so the legs will basically align themselves to be flush with the table and all that sort of good stuff. So then I can affix the framework with it all locked in its position. So a couple of screws in the middle, because I know that's not going anywhere. And then attaching those figure eight screws um, to hold the tabletop down uh, for all those other U-Butte reasons. I tell you, these corner clamps have really helped me out just to set everything perfectly square and then I can tighten up the bolts which I want tight. The ones going this way, they're nice and tight. These end couple, they've got a fair bit of room to move um, so that tabletop can do its magic, whatever that is. Turns out if you bought the wrong bolts, you can just cut them off. Who knew? Normally when I do threaded inserts, about nine times out of 10, they don't line up. But I've had a win on this one. Okay, there you go, Marion 2.0. I've never named a piece of furniture before, um, but this one's pretty dear to the heart. The timber was bought by my grandmother, who sadly no longer with us, but I'm pretty confident that she'd be pretty happy with this table and the fact that we can all sit around as a family and enjoy each other's company. So thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate it. And um, you have a good day. Take it easy. See you next time.